to give you very quickly five reasons why Minnesota needs a comprehensive transportation funding bill this session. One, we need to give more people the option to use transit so that a car is not a requirement for access to opportunity. transportation funding bill to fix our crumbling roads and bridges. Three, we need a comprehensive transportation funding bill to reduce traffic delays so people have more time with family and friends and goods move more efficiently. Four, we need a comprehensive transportation funding bill so that biking and walking, the healthiest options for people and the planet, are convenient options. And five, Minnesota needs a comprehensive transportation funding bill to create good paying jobs, building smart investments in roads, bridges, transit, biking, and walking. We today can tell you that we have a fabulous bill in the Senate, Senate File 87. You'll hear more in a few minutes from Senator Nibble. We have a similar uh, proposal from Governor Dayton. And these proposals embody what movement crafted as principles, that we need a comprehensive and balanced transportation system, and we need long-term and dedicated funding to make that happen. And now on top of that, we have these proposals for funding that have been introduced, which is really, really key. That's really our goal here. Our goal here is to get the funding that will make it possible to make those investments in transit, in bike and walk facilities in our roads and bridges. We have to have the funding or none of this really matters that much. So we have to keep the pressure on. The main focus that we're talking about right now is the fact that we have to have dedicated funding. We have to have ongoing, sustainable, dedicated funding. Trying to rely on one-time funding from the general fund is not going to work. And that, that money just comes and goes not going to make a difference in the long run. We have to have funding that works. We've had a tradition of user fees for transportation that are dedicated. We need to just build on that. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. And that's our message. So we have to have those dedicated funds and we have to have all of you as these great advocates who are out there spreading the message and helping us get to the finish line. We know how important this is for people in Minnesota. And Dave already listed off a ton of reasons why transportation is important. Um, I think the one thing that we also can add to that is how important this is for safety. And you heard some of that in some of those videos. This really is an urgent issue because it, you know people get killed in traffic crashes. They have life-altering injuries. We have to do everything we can to improve our transportation system, to make it safer, to make it more effective, to make it work for people, because this is about people's lives. And we don't have time to wait. Every year that goes by, this problem gets worse, it gets more expensive, and there are too many safety problems that need to be addressed. So we need to really keep up the fight. We appreciate you being here so much, and we need to really convey that sense of urgency. It has to be this year. Thank you. Thank you so much for your passion, for your persistence, because uh, this would this day would not be here where transportation is a frontier uh, issue at the Capitol this year. And it happened because of uh, not just today, but because of the years uh, of work that all of you have been doing to advance this multimodal vision for our great state of Minnesota. It is not lost on any of us who are transportation people that actually it isn't about transportation. It's about all those things that come with transportation, that result from transportation. It is the health of our individuals. It is the health of our communities. It is the health of our economies, both personally and, and collectively. And it's about uh, equity and access to schools, to education, to jobs. Um, and it is about uh, the environment, both our physical environment and our social environment. And that's what's thrilling for me to be part of MINDA and be part of this collective conversation. And, uh, and Dave is right. I, I love standing with 
Adam Dunnick, chair of the Metropolitan Council, uh, who has uh, been steadfast on all these issues for years, and it's not lost on me that uh, Adam comes from the road construction uh, family, and uh, and you're right, I'm genetically a bus guy, but guess what? It takes all of the worlds that come together and to create uh, the, the world where we want to live. And uh, it is an honor working for Governor Dayton uh, because he is passionate about transportation. He's starting next uh, week with us, with me and others uh, to help uh, bring this story out to all of your areas or out across the entire state of Minnesota. And I just want to say two quick things because uh, Dave and Margaret have said it and have done such a wonderful job, but um, it is about this year. This becomes an incredibly inefficient, incredibly harder to do. Uh, we can't wait. It is about a 10-year plan. All these funding proposals that make sense is about something that happens over time with dedicated revenues that can be spent right away toward advancing the prosperity of Minnesota. And you'll hear a lot of reasons that maybe we should just wait and think about it. We've thought about it a lot. And if there's ways that we at our state agencies can provide the facts, the arithmetic, we're being studied, we'll be studied again. I'm completely fine with all that, but what we need is an action, and the action comes from all of you. My wife tells me the, se the secret to my success is that I, uh, that I do what I'm told, uh, so she says, <laughs> and uh, 25 years of marriage says that, so uh, I love when we hear Margaret saying, do what you're told, when you hear the email, it makes a difference, so uh, I'm really looking forward to engaging with all of you over the next couple of months, and Senator Dimble and the other elected officials who are here, um, anything we can do to help support your hard work in advancing this cause this year. Um, we stand ready to do that. Thank you, everybody. Well, I want to uh, say a special word of thanks to all my brothers and sisters in labor for being here. It's such an important part of the coalition. And, uh, and it's certainly an important part where I come from. The men and women who build the transportation system, the, also obviously the important workforce that we're trying to attract and retain as we build out the transportation system and specifically the transit system of the future. But it's not just labor either, obviously. This coalition is big and includes business, too. We've been around to see business groups a lot in the last few weeks, and there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm and a complete understanding that we need a transit system if we are going to attract and retain the businesses we have to keep the workforce here of the future. And uh, it's a, the, the point I want to at least begin with is the unity of this coalition is so important. And I'm the chair of the Met Council. I spent my days some some of yesterday, I started at, at the uh, State of the City address in Minnetonka, I met with some city council members there, uh, went and saw the Ramsey County Board earlier this week, visited with them, was out to the city of Loretto to meet with a bunch of uh, mayors out in a, in a rural district. And our district, or our, our uh, metropolitan region is diverse, and this coalition here is diverse. And it's hard to keep together, but I, I can't uh, emphasize enough how important it is for everybody to hang together because we need uh, a multimodal uh, transportation system that's comprehensive in nature, that has a dedicated funding source. And I'll keep repeating some of the, the comments that Margaret and David made. It's so important that we stick together because it's going to be a long uh, challenge here this session, but I'm really confident of the outcome. So just to say a word or two about the transit system that we're working towards and what the governor's vision lays out. It's, it's, uh, the, the, the transit package will raise over $2.8 billion uh, over 10 years and accelerate a build out of 20 transit ways. And we need that for a couple, couple of really important reasons. We need that because we're expecting 800,000 new people in this region in the next 10, uh, excuse me, next 30 years. And we need to plan for that growth. We need to be able to move around, connect people with their jobs. Uh, this plan will allow 500,000 new workers access to a job within 30 minutes. And the difference between that, yes, right. and the difference between that system and the system we have today, where if I live in South Minneapolis or you live in certain parts of the region in, in a suburban community, you have to take a bus downtown and then catch a transfer and then transfer somewhere else. People today are taking one to two hour commutes to, the, to a job, and the quality of life impacts of that, as well as the importance of 
having a strong economy and connecting workers with jobs is so vital, so vital. We heard from the, uh, the chair of the MAC, uh, or excuse me, ex executive director of the MAC a couple weeks ago that the difference between the, having the blue line now in Hiawatha and the way it was before was that access to a workforce, it's so critical. And why else do we need a transit system? We need it for, uh, again, to remain economically competitive with our peer regions to show that we're interested in investing in a transit system and gonna build it for the long term. I can't exaggerate enough the importance of a system approach to this. And again, this is the difference, I think, between how some people are envisioning a transportation package and how we see it moving forward. We must have a system that works well together between modes, as well as having it come online as soon as possible. And that's why it's important to accelerate the build out and have it happen in 10 years. And lastly, I just want to say, you don't have to look far to see some of the other benefits of a transit system and, and an important investment. And that's just right across the mall here at the Green Line. And we've seen ridership exceed expectations by over 10,000 people a day. We expected 26, 27, 28,000 riders a day. We're nearly at 40,000 riders every day. It's an enormously successful project. And in addition, even before the line was open, we saw over $2 billion in private investment, and now that number is approaching $3 billion in investment. And we don't build a transit system just to do economic development, but it's an important piece of what we do in the corridor planning that we're doing moving forward, which is why Southwest LRT is so important, which is why Botno LRT and a number of the other busways that we're working on are so important. So I just want to urge everybody to stick together. It's going to be a long spring, but with spring comes some water and some, and some sun for the grassroots to keep growing, and we're going to keep growing the support, and we are going to uh, move forward this year and get a transportation bill done. Here has been a fantastic day at the Capitol. It has been an amazing transportation day. So thank you for everything you've done to really raise the visibility and really claim your power in your building, the people's building, the Capitol, the state office building. We've heard before already why this is so important. This is about living lives of dignity, of opportunity, of access, of full participation in our community, about building communities that work well for everyone. This is about full democratic participation in a free, fair, and open society. That's what this transportation subject and debate is all about. Bottom line is about the values we hold as Americans, and that's what we're fighting for, excluding anyone from participating fully in our state and the opportunities that this state offers is not what we're about. These are not the values that we hold as Minnesotans. That's what's at stake, and we have to win this debate. So, what you're doing today is absolutely vital. You are holding your elected representatives accountable. There can be no place for us to hide. That is unacceptable. You heard it before. We have been admiring this problem for a long, long time. No more admiring the problem. We know what needs to be done. We have the resources. We have the ability. This is a political issue now. This is about politics, and this is where you come in. Your eyes are on your elected representatives. You are holding them to account. And if they claim that we don't understand the problem, we don't know how much money we need to spend, we don't understand the issues, invite them out to your community. It is a transformative experience for a legislator to come out and see the roadways. We heard from the woman in the video about losing her husband because the roadway was unsafe. Invite them out to see those roadways. When there are shoulders, there's no recovery zone. When the, road, when the roadways are crumbling, when there are sight lines that people can't navigate around, when people can't get to jobs, when people have to stand out in the cold, freezing cold weather like today, the wind is blowing, and they're with their little kids, and they can't get to their work. Up in St. Cloud, we had a field here a few years ago. And Two miles out of town, there's a working class community. No connection to the service jobs two miles away. Nothing but open fields and woods and shoulders of busy highways to walk down. That is not acceptable. That is not the Minnesota that we're trying to build. That is not the Minnesota that we inherited from our mothers and our fathers and our grandmothers and our grandfathers. Now it's our turn to step up and build the kind of Minnesota that allows everyone to be successful. Thank you.